mind, don't stress your mind We coming home tonight Good morning, I am Dr. Cesar Climaco and we are, brought, we are broadcasting from Zamboanga City, Philippines in a underground bunker. We are going to do a coronavirus update as often as we can. Today is February 22, 2020 and we are going to give you the latest coronavirus update. There are two worrying, worrisome things that happened in the last few days. One is that there are four coronavirus deaths in Iran. And these Iranians did not have any contact with anybody from China or who came from China, as far as they know. The second is a woman in China who visited relatives and gave them coronavirus to five of her relatives. She was then taken in to be quarantined. She had no symptoms. She was not sick, but she was able to give it to her relatives. The first test they did on her for coronavirus was negative. Subsequent test was positive. So these are the two problems that we are faced now. That people without symptoms, no fever, no running nose, no coughing, nada, nothing can spread the coronavirus around. And that's very worrisome because if they test people for coronavirus and let them go because the test is negative, then they will be able to spread it around even if they're not sick. The second is why did the people in Iran develop coronavirus? There is about 13 or 18 cases in Iran total and they did not have coronavirus as of last week and they were not even related to any known case of coronavirus. Now in Korea they have uh, in one city from 16 coronavirus cases it became 108 in one day. So it seems to be that in Korea they have a city now that is like Wuhan, spreading the disease fast. Now in China there were supposed to be 2,345 deaths, or maybe that's worldwide, and about 75 or 76,000 new cases. The biggest problem with China is that I do not believe their statistics. My own gut feeling is that it could be double or 10 times more what they admit. So the coronavirus, which I call SARS-2, originated in China, I think is worse than what the Chinese are admitting. So I come from Sambuama City. And our city here is ill-prepared for coronavirus outbreak. When I go to the local hospital, they're so crowded. People are just next to each other. If one person goes there to the hospital, is admitted for pneumonia, tested negative for coronavirus two times, and is put with the general population in the hospital, they may really have coronavirus and it can spread. But I do not think we have the facilities to put everybody with fever and pneumonia in isolation. And we do not have the gowns, the goggles, the mask, and the personnel. So, what to do if there is a first case of coronavirus in this city? Now, we always talk about the death rates of 2% with coronavirus and we do not really talk about treatment because one, there is no treatment. There is one case in Thailand where they gave several antiviral drugs and the person got better. 
supposedly in China, I think, 12,000 people got better without any standard treatment. But the Chinese have about 80 treatment schemes going on. They have about 600 per group to see what works. Now, most of the deaths are in older folks and those with illnesses that are bad. In the Philippines, I think one of the deaths was an older person from China, and another was one maybe with HIV. I'm not so sure about that because the news is not very credible. But if your immune system <clears throat> is good, most likely you will not die from the coronavirus. So at a death or mortality rate of 2%, that means if 200, no, that means if 100 people get the coronavirus, two may die to three, which is not really very bad in terms of a death rate of a illness that everybody's afraid of. But how can you reduce your chances of dying? One, don't have a chronic illness like HIV or tuberculosis or cancer or heart disease or kidney failure or diabetes. And you can improve your immunity. Immunity can be improved by one, zinc, two, selenium, three, vitamin C. I would say vitamin C in doses, what we call mega doses, maybe eight to 10 grams a day or more. Vitamin D, the sun, sunlight vitamin, that vitamin D3, maybe 20,000 units a day to 30,000 may help. And multivitamins so that your immune system has all the ingredients to keep your immune system working well. Nobody can say multivitamins don't help because nobody ever checks the whole person for what they are missing in nutrients or micronutrients or even macronutrients. Next, the cheapest thing I can think of that may help, but nobody is studying, is colloidal silver. If you add colloidal silver to somebody who is, who is sick with pneumonia, who is going to die from coronavirus, you can give it by drinking it or giving it by inhalation therapy such as the ones I use for asthma. So why not try it? Why let them die? In the internet, you will see a lot of articles or fact checkers saying, colloidal silver does not work. And he states, one doctor said it does not work. So don't follow this advice that colloidal silver, silver does not work. It's cheap and it can be used and it might work. Better than nothing. What else may work? In the internet, they're saying they're using stem cells, Rendevacir, which is an antiviral drug, chloroquine, and I think they're experimenting with everything. But to me, colloidal silver is the cheapest thing that can or may work. Another thing that nobody even thinks about are enzymes. There is an enzyme called Womenzyme, which supposedly strip, strips the bacteria or the virus out of its protective protein shell so that the body's immune defense can trip or can go after that virus. So Womenzyme is expensive, but can also be used. But I don't hear of anybody using it. And if you combine colloidal silver, enzyme and vitamin C, vitamin D, multivitamins, and zinc and selenium, maybe you won't get sick with the coronavirus even if you get it. And the one thing that is also not mentioned too much is that there are cases of coronavirus positive patients who tested negative for seven times or six times before they became positive. And that is very alarming. 
Thank you and vaya con Dios.